If you look at the challenges today, many Christians look at our opponents or rivals in terms of people who dislike us or ideas such as relativism, postmodernism, secularism, in other words, ISM at the end of every word, they are all sets of ideas and they're important and many of them are very dangerous. But what has made the church cave in, has shaped it and distorted the church is actually not modernism, a set of ideas, but what's called modernity. Modernity would include cell phones and cars and television and cities, and bureaucracies, watches, things like this which shape our thinking, often without our aware of it because they're not necessarily ideas, but they shape our thinking even when no thinkers are involved. And I often use the illustration of time. We live in a world of fast life. It doesn't come from any philosopher, this 24-7 pressure. It comes from clocks and watches, but with digital atomic time, now the speed of the modern world, business of the speed of light and so on, turbo capitalism, life is fired at us point blank. Now to understand that, you need to understand clocks and time, not a thinker like Nietzsche or Hegel or Rousseau or whatever. So we need to get Christians who understand the world, the way consumerism and supermarkets and shopping affect our thinking, not just relativism and so on. In America, Christians are a huge majority, but they're culturally ineffectual. And there are many reasons for this, but one of the many is the fact that Christians have stopped thinking Christianly, loving the Lord with our minds, thinking about anything and everything under the Lordship of Christ. So universities like Regent, which are committed to the Lordship of Christ and thinking Christianly, thinking biblically, thinking theologically, are incredibly important. Already in your first 40 years, I meet people living in Washington who've come from Regent, who know how to stand and to speak, and this is wonderful. One of the greatest social reformers of all time was William Wilberforce, who abolished slavery and many, many other things. And it was said of him, Wilberforce shows that a single person can change the world, but he cannot do it alone. In other words, Wilberforce had a team around him of like-minded people with a clear vision, clear calling, and together they made a difference. And so you hope that students graduates coming from region will be given here a vision, cultural vision, to be salty and light-bearing and make a great difference in American culture, hopefully by God's grace, helping to turn things around, but also a sense of their own individual calling. But they will form friendships that will last them a lifetime, and rather like the Clapham Group, the Clapham Circle in England, they will be in law, medicine, computer science, politics, wherever it is, the arts, and really make a difference. None of us can do it alone. We need each other.